Nosotros estuvimos con un pabellón de, de Pro Chile, de Chile, eh, y en esta instancia, o sea, el próximo año también va a ser un pabellón de Chile, pero la idea es que como hay tanta gente de distintos países, es una invitación a que eh, tienen una casa más, tienen una instancia. Eh, yo creo que el tema de, de, de la Alianza del Pacífico también nos une en, en eh, ferias como esta, en festivales como este. Entonces, primero va a haber el stand. Y este stand va a tener temas, eh, va a tener pantallas, va a tener un audio, va a tener eh, sistemas de, de micrófonos para que puedan hacer presentaciones, conexiones eh, eléctricas si quieren conectar sus computadores. Entonces, si están interesados del país que sea y necesitan estar ahí, genial, están todos invitados, pueden participar, nosotros vamos a recibir felices. Eh, esa es la primera instancia a la cual los queremos invitar. Lo segundo es que... El, el año, este año realizamos una previa, una previa chilena, en la cual teníamos pisco, algunos probaron el pisco ayer, eh, teníamos vino chileno eh, y teníamos choripán incluso. Bueno, este networking también lo vamos a realizar el próximo año, también están invitados de todos los países. Eh, la idea es justamente que si están conociendo, como decía Cristian, están conociendo gente durante todos los días, una forma muy buena de concretar esos negocios, esas nuevas posibilidades que se están creando, es invitarlos a todos a este networking. Entonces, después llega ese día, que va a ser uno de los últimos días, el 11 o 12, probablemente el 11 de, de marzo, eh, y ahí pueden cerrar ciertos negocios, pueden concretar eh, lo que están conversando en un ambiente muy grato. Además están, bueno, esto más enfocado en los, en los emprendedores chilenos, pero también están los agregados comerciales que, como contaba Francisco, te pueden apoyar en, en el proceso de tener un mejor aterrizaje en South by Southwest. También nosotros tenemos algunas tarifas para los tickets, lo que hablaba Cristian, los tickets que son los Platinum o los Interactive, ah, eh, sean del país que sean, si se inscriben con nosotros pueden tener una posibilidad de acceder a un descuento, eso ningún problema y están todas las opciones, después nosotros vamos a mandar la información. Eh, no sé si decimos la información de los precios, pero bueno, nosotros igual vamos a enviarles toda la información y la idea es que si desean acceder a algún descuento para llegar a South by Southwest, una posibilidad es Compro Chile. Y finalmente, lo que, nos, lo que conversamos con Peter Lewis también es que la posibilidad de que si ustedes quieren exponer allá en South by Southwest una vitrina tan importante como esta feria, que nos envíen la información principalmente la temática, su nombre, el, el perfil de la, de la empresa y el expositor. Y con esta información podemos ver la posibilidad de que ustedes puedan en alguna instancia exponer en South by Southwest. Así que esto no es una invitación solo para los emprendedores chilenos. Yo creo que la instancia y el espíritu que se ha creado con la Alianza del Pacífico es que todos puedan aprovechar esto. Nosotros estamos haciendo un esfuerzo y nos encantaría que ustedes puedan aprovecharlo. Eso principalmente. Uh, this is a question for, for Jason about crowdfunding, and I want to make it public. I'll tell you in English and then in Spanish. We can do one or two things as a region. We can follow the lead of the US, or we can leapfrog what you're doing, because you've, you're hobbled by regulations. Is there something we can do as a region to, to go around your regulations and, and, and catch up and leapfrog what you're doing? Le pregunto que si hay algo que como región podamos hacer. Los gringos están limitados por la regulación gringa. Hay cosas que quizás podemos hacer como región, que podemos brincarnos todo eso, y hacer crowdfunding para equity, para muchas cosas, mucho más rápido que ellos, en vez de seguir detrás de ellos 10 años atrás como hemos hecho hasta ahora. Yes. I mean, yeah, you can. It's basically, uh, that's one of the main uh, outcomes of the research. I mean, that's, you've, you've, that's the punchline, we would say, of the research is that the developing economies have the opportunity to absolutely leapfrog over developed economies with regard to crowdfunding. Because we have all of this antiquated regulatory environment, which you, know, you may not have as much of. And the ability to say, let's, let's create this in a new way, and let's do it in a way that is appropriate for us and our circumstances and our needs. And so I don't think, you know, I don't think that the Jobs Act is perfect. It's, it didn't, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing perfect about it. It's, it's, it is a piece of legislation we were really hard on and a lot of people put a lot of effort into. And it will, it will you know, it's just like any legislative effort, it's a step-by-step -step process. And so, 
you know, I think that each, each country has to look at their situation and what their current laws are and what their uh, environment and culture will have, but uh, there's absolutely the chance for other countries to do it better. But are there any specific, you know, points we have to address? Uh, so the, the, the three areas that you have to think through, and this is just my opinion on when you're making this legislation, is because you have the, the, the recommendation I would have is that you go to your Congress people or your legislators with a proposed solution, with something that you've really sort of thought through and, and with a group of people and a team, just as we were talking about this morning with Victor, kind of coming together with a team who can, who can come up with something. And number one, you have to think about how are you going to protect investors in your country? Uh, because that's the number one job of a financial regulator is how are you going to keep, you know, grandma from losing all her money? Um, and, you know, so have a good answers for that and how you can do that. Number two, you have to balance that against the needs of entrepreneurs. So it's like it has to be easy enough for you to be able to do and to be able to communicate and be able to, to manage over time, uh, understanding that there does have to be oversight and regulation. And then number three is how do you communicate the value of this to the ecosystem in your country? So how do you talk to angels and venture capital and banks about how this is not a threat, this is an opportunity? I mean, for banks, uh, the thing I say is like, look, if I raise money in crowdfunding successfully, I have to have somewhere to put the money I just raised which is typically going to be a bank. So congratulations, you just got a new customer. You know? And so that's the, that's the thing about for banks. They should look at this as a business development opportunity, not a threat. And so I think it's, just, it's really about how we can uh, just learning how to communicate these things effectively uh, to all the constituents in the markets. And I think it's doable. Uh, this is a two. Uh part question for both Jason and the people at Plan C. Um, the first part of the question is, what is your take on what Angel's List did with syndicates? And how do you think that may apply uh, for Latin America? And the second part is, how relevant and important do you think is what Mattermark, I don't know if you guys know it, uh, Daniel Morin, Morel, uh, I believe it's, it is very important to have that um, solid background of, inf of very uh, validated information. And how, how relevant do you think a matter mark is, or do you think there should be a Latin American version or a global version of matter mark to address the issues of information not just from the entrepreneurs but also of the funds and uh, yeah and the money that flows uh, throughout those two main entities so I'll just talk with Mattermark uh, basically Mattermark is a different I would describe that as a different take on a clout score if you guys are familiar with the clout um, and it basically it addresses the basic human need to classify everything. Uh, we just, you know, we as human beings have to put people in, put things and people in boxes. And so by having a, a number, I'm able to more easily put something in a box and understand what it, what it is and give it a relative value. Um, so trust marks are gonna be really important in this. I think over time, I, I think Mattermark is doing some really interesting work. I think when you add on to that uh, funding, and as your ability to raise funds and use funds effectively into that score, I think it gets even more interesting. Um, I think that uh, you know we'll see more of that. And I think that's one of the things, I'll just take a quick sideline. It, it's a very, very good point because one of the things that you guys as entrepreneurs should be thinking about in all of this is to have crowdfunding work in the country, it's gonna take more than just a handful of crowdfunding platforms. There's going to be an entire ecosystem of companies that will be created to make this company function effectively. So one example of that is online advertising, where you took something that was very offline and institutional, which was what 
you know, uh, advertising was when it was magazine ads and television ads to something that's very individualized and, and online. And so to do that, you had to have a whole lot of companies that were created, that many of which have become billion dollar companies, doing things like anal analyzation and tracking and measurement and, and, and sale and resale of things, secondary markets. All of these things will be necessary for crowdfund investing to take place at scale and successfully. And so as an entrepreneur, I would be thinking about what are the kinds of things that are going to be needed that the current services don't provide. And I'll just throw one example out, uh, investor relations. So today when you're a public company, you, have, you spend a ton of money on an investor relations company to do a bunch of work for you. That doesn't work for crowdfunding companies because there's very little money. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but what you can do is entrepreneurs will create new services that enable investor relations to happen at scale and via social media, so you're being delivered information about the companies you invest in in the feeds you already spend time on, and do it for a monthly recurring revenue, which is like, you know, mother's milk. And so that's what, that, and that's just one example of the kinds of companies you'll see created. Oh. Syndicates. Oh. So syndicates, thank you. Um, I think syndicates are fantastic. I think that I think that we'll see more of it. I think that seeing them in Latin America, we will definitely see that in Latin America because we'll see it everywhere. I mean, we'll see it everywhere because it handles the question that like professional investors or angels or VCs, what they say is, but who's going to do the valuation? Who's going to do the due diligence? Who's going to who's going to represent this, you know, these 50 investors? And so as this market comes together, someone will need to act as a lead investor. And so by doing these sort of syndicates, that is a, it's a great way to do that. It's also an interesting way to help regulators think about this as a very orderly market. Because you're able to say, look, you're going to have a professional investor who's going to be the lead, and they're going to have people who come in behind them and, and help to leverage that capital. And so, yeah, I think, I think there's, it's a powerful new, and so, again, this is another new financial structure that didn't exist a year ago, and now it does. And so we'll see more and more of these things occur. Eh, lo, que, lo que estamos buscando es tener eh, una manera de poder beneficiarnos de un sistema que ya existe. Eh, hay muchas veces en las que este sistema no va a tener ma, eh, ni muchas diferencias con el sistema normal, con respecto a los sindicatos por lo menos. Hay muchas realidades que son comunes. Lo que sí tiende a pasar eh, y lo que pasa con, con las personas que están trabajando con nosotros eh, estos días es que eh, alinea muy bien dentro de la empresa poder tener eh, una, una página web en la cual eh, hay un resumen de lo que la empresa hace. Porque las personas cuando tienen que ponerse de acuerdo eh, con esa iniciativa tienen que iterar varias veces la propuesta de valor. Entonces llegan a, a internet con una propuesta de valor súper clara y ese eh, hemos visto tanto personas que han sido exitosas como otros que no lo han sido, eh, siempre agradecen el hecho de haber subido una, un, un proyecto a, a Kickstarter, a Indiegogo, porque tienden a, a, a funcionar como piedra angular de la comunicación completa de su marca. Entonces, dirigir a un, a un posible cliente o a un inversionista o a una autoridad o a algún amigo del colegio o a algún profesor que uno tuvo a la página de crowdfunding eh, va a mostrar al tiro quiénes son, qué hacen en un video y después eh, hay, hay posibilidades de buscar más información, con lo cual la, el, el consecuente beneficio en, en baja de ansiedad, por decirlo de alguna manera, es brutal. Y eso hace que se alinee muy bien la comunicación interna y externa de la empresa eh, con la consecuente eh, eh, posibilidad de, de, de estar claro, pasaría a exportar. Eh, un, un, sin alargarme más, dentro del proceso exportador, el proceso de, de poder salir al mundo con esta idea, eh, eh, el, el tema del crowdfunding funciona como, como esta piedra angular eh, y termina siendo una manera en la que el mundo eh, sabe leer crowdfunding. La gente está acostumbrada a poder ver estos videos de dos minutos y medio, tres minutos, de poder ver estas descripciones, los pledge. Entonces, es como una especie de ficha única o una especie como de... de, de, de Página eh, conocida en la cual las personas han entrenado a destacar dos o tres cosas <coughs> y a saber rápidamente en, en qué están y, y, y qué están haciendo. Eso. Bárbara, si hay más. ¿Tienes más preguntas? ¿Alguien más? 
Bueno, aprovechando eh, que tenemos a Peter acá también. Peter, are you listening? Ah, okay. Aprovechando que está Peter acá, eh, quería que nos cuente un poco, Peter, sobre South by Southwest y cómo, cómo la, los emprendedores que están acá, que están pensando en postular y en ir a South by Southwest, cómo pueden sacar el mejor provecho, makes the most, make the most of the show. Cómo, cómo pueden hacerlo, si puede hablar un poco para orientarlo. I think, um, uh, was it Christian that gave the, uh, I mean, he explained it uh, very well that it's, uh, you know, anything can happen because you never know who's next to you. Uh, but be that as it may, uh, the best thing that you can do is create that schedule. Um, more than create a schedule, have goals going into the event, whether it's meeting 10 venture capitalists, Uh, whether it's um, you know um, having meetings with companies uh, based in England or five companies from Silicon Valley or whatever the, your goal is, outlining that goal is the most important first step, um, and then taking the time to look at the schedule, see what events are happening, see where these type of people are hanging out, where they're going to be. Um, that is a big key. One element we have at South by Southwest is called South by Social. And it's essentially a social network for all the registrants that are attending South by Southwest. And so you can get on this network, you can email people, uh, message them, and say, hey, I'm going to be at South by Southwest. I think we have a lot in common. We need to talk. Um, you know, it, that platform allows you um, in ways that was never possible in events to know in advance who's going to be there and uh, figuring out a schedule uh, to meet those people and make the most of your time there. Um, and I, I think that that advanced planning more than anything else is w what needs to happen for entrepreneurs looking to be uh, to have a successful event. Um, Jason has attended South by Southwest, and he uh, can, I'm, I'm going to give it to him so he can kind of give an outsider's perspective on making the most of it, uh, because he attended uh, last year, and can kind of, I think, uh, give another alternative uh, perspective uh, from my own, since I'm employed by the festival. Yeah, so I, I went last year, I'm, I'm speaking uh, this year at the, at the conference. Uh, it's a... It, I'll just echo everything they've said. It's a completely overwhelming experience to go because there's, you know, tens of thousands of people who are there, and you really need to plan ahead. Um, it's like you probably need to, to, to have a couple of hours just to really, seriously, I know this sounds a little crazy, but a couple of hours to go through the entire schedule because it's massive and to really think about what you want to achieve and then to go back and really kind of plan out your schedule and begin to make those meetings in advance. Um, making the meetings in advance is really important. Um, I would say that, you know, and also just from, a, from, the, so from the business perspective, there's lots of good opportunity. From the fun perspective, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's amazing. Um, and Austin is an amazing town. If you haven't been there before, I would highly recommend it. Uh, it's one of my favorite cities in the U.S. And it's just, a, you know, it's a very friendly city. It's a very easy to get around city and uh, great food. And so it's just worth, you know, kind of seeing a different part of, of the U.S. And the other thing I would say is there's a lot of great tech in Austin. There's a lot of great technology being, being created there by some really interesting startups. And I think it's a, you know, it'd be an interesting place to, to just sort of kind of experience what it's like to be a startup in that environment. I'm sorry I'm monopolizing the questions, but Um, I want to take you guys, the three of you, of anyone that has been to South by Southwest, uh, to just uh, speak on a much lighter note and share with us, and this is tough, what are the top two or three things that you could remember really quickly? Uh, what are the top two or three craziest things that you've seen at South by Southwest that you may or may not be proud of? <laughs> um, I have an interesting perspective because I don't always get to experience South by Southwest because I'm working 16 to 18 hours a day. Um, that being said, uh, one of the most, uh, two of the most amazing things uh, that I got to participate in at South by Southwest were, one, I got to see Bruce Springsteen play for three hours in a venue of 2,000 people. Um, 
and it's amazing to see a 63-year-old man uh, dive into a crowd of people um, and not break a hip, uh, but Bruce does it. Um, and the other thing is I got to see Prince last year, um, another cool experience in a small venue. Um, and those are the two things that stick out in a cool standpoint on a lighter note because I'm very much less busy um, at the end of the week when these musical concerts are happening than I am at the beginning of the event. So um, on a not so great note, one of the most memorable moments was, I can't remember if this was last year or the year before, um, but a company made a lot of waves. Um, it was not officially participating in South by Southwest, but the nature of our event is no matter what happens in Austin during South by Southwest, it becomes associated with South by Southwest. So if something bad happens, it's still at South by Southwest. And uh, this particular company um, made the uh, ethically uh, dubious de uh, decision to uh, create homeless hotspots so what they did was they uh, equipped uh, homeless people in Austin um, with the equipment to become a wireless hotspot so attendees of South by Southwest could go up to a homeless person and uh, check their email. Um, and that, uh, you know, created some interesting problems for us um, as event producers. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, that that would be you know light on a good way and uh, bad kind of light as well. Um, I mean, one of the cool things is I was there and and um, got to know a producer from CNN and I ended up being on CNN talking about you know South by Southwest and and crowdfunding. Um, because of that, I got introduced to somebody and was and then ended up at a conference uh, and doing some media in uh, Dubai and Doha. So it's like that was really kind of a cool thing, um, you know. On the the funny perspective, I uh, was I had met someone the night before, and a friend of mine was just like, "Hey, let's go to this uh, this party," and I was like, "Sure." And we go through this. I, I mean, I don't know where it was. It was somewhere downtown, but I mean, you know, we sort of go through this back door, and we kind of go down a set of stairs, and then up a set of stairs, and we're in this room with it's, it's packed with people and. Drinks are just getting handed out like, you know, free tickets and it's just crazy. I mean, it was a lot of fun. I, you know, we had, everybody had a great time. Um, and then one of my friends who was with me kind of vanished and we didn't find him until like the next morning. Uh, so that was sort of, you know, kind of crazy. You have a... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, for me, I think uh, the most crazy thing is that you can drink all day if you want there in, in South by Southwest. No, I mean it. Like in the morning, uh, we we rented a place in with our Airbnb. It was far away, so we just didn't. We want to be early, so we just take the bus and be there very early. And my breakfast was a beer with a grilled cheese for free. Then you go somewhere else. Oh man, you come here, please. If you have some wine, have some beer, have some drinks, have some, and they give you drinks all day. So if you want, if you want to be, I don't know, drink a lot, you you will and for free. So that's crazy for me. Um, and the bad thing is that for to stay there, the people in Airbnb renting their places in downtown is crazy expensive. So you, I don't know if if I could we couldn't pay this, so we had to go very far away to live to be to rent a place. And one night it rained very much, start raining, so we we should get get a cab. And there was three thousand people, and I think they they don't have so many cabs down there. And people, they don't want to make long runs because they lost a lot of time between them. So we had to walk all the way back then. So uh, what else crazy? I don't know. In the trade show, we had some crazy like time with all the people with Protile. We had a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of crazy people w uh, went to, the, to our uh, pavilion uh, telling different stories. I, I, I don't remember the name, but there was this guy who was obsessed with Chile. And he was just coming and uh, going around. And then he would wa uh, walk around, and the next day he came back. Then uh, one hour later, where's the wine? And uh, it was like all day going to the pavilion. I don't know. Uh, it's a great experience. Uh, you will find a lot of crazy stories to tell. Some are censored here, so we cannot tell them. We made a promise that we won't tell. So you may, might have your own uh, stories down there. Oh, yeah. I want to ask you both, both, both of you guys, um, if I'm planning a Kickstarter campaign, which is the best way all three of you, I guess, 
the best way to benefit from going to SX, um, either as an attendee or as an exhibitor, but like for, for networking and, and building a, a platform for my soon-to-be Kickstarter campaign. Is, that, is there a normal connection or, or isn't there? I mean, I'm biased, uh, but uh, I think there is a connection. Um, not only because there is uh, programmed content uh, related to crowdfunding. I mean, obviously, he's a speaker at the event. Um, but apart from social media, uh, South by Southwest is an event um, that allows you to meet the most possible people and to broadcast your goals and um, really make connections with people that will further your goals. And apart from uh, social media where you have access to the whole world immediately, there's really not another event that brings together that many people um, from literally across the globe, whether it's Singapore uh, or Canada or Hong Kong or France or Germany. I mean, it's literally um, the entire world is represented at that event. And I think it's one of the few events uh, that allows that sort of broad-based global uh, network on the ground, face-to-face uh, -face meetings. Um, but Jason can probably add to that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I guess you, I could see using it um, as a lead-up to the event. I could also see something that you could use, uh, you know, sort of during or after the event from a Kickstarter campaign perspective. So you could use it as a lead up to event because you could be using social media to drive traffic to your campaign around topics that are going to be happening at South By. And so because people are going to be looking for the topics they're interested in, and so if you're really actively commenting through the different social channels, you can drive traffic to your campaign that way. Uh, you could do it on the ground through a lot of guerrilla ways of being able to sort of you know get people to, to see that. Um, and then also you could use it if there were if there were topics of conversation like trending topics at the at the conference or afterwards, you could leverage that they're all aligned with your campaign. You could do that as well. But campaigns are best suited when they're focused around a very sort of short and specific um, thing, like a project or or a product or a company, uh, and less about something kind of too broad. Okay, because uh, in my case, it's it's not going to be happening at the same time. It's a campaign that's going to start like uh, one month after SX finishes. So that's one, one question. And the other is, so do, do you think it's better to be an attendee or, or an exhibitor if, for the case? Uh, I, I don't know. I, mean, I think they both have value. I think um, the, the first, when you were talking about the, where, where, when, when in the time frame you were going to do that, I guess you could use South By to gain more uh, traction socially. So by commenting and engaging in the, in the conversation leading up to and during the debate, you can drive more followers. So you have more people who are engaged with your brand, um, you know, through Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. And so that when you do go out for funding, you've got a larger pool of people to go out to. I mean, one of the things we talk a lot about is start by building your network early. All right. Thank you. A mí me parece importante destacar que hay una, una posibilidad de ocupar el crowdfunding como eh, una manera de ir más allá que una tarjeta de visita algunas veces. Eh, cuando uno, los que hemos ido a la feria, yo, yo participé con Francisco en la Game Developer Conference en, en principio de este año, y me pasaba que hay mucha gente muy interesante y uno se pierde un poco de quién es quién. Yo he visto algunas personas que han empezado a poner eh, las caras de ellos en blanco y negro al, al lado de atrás de la tarjeta. Otros ponen un código QR quizás para que la gente pueda ir a buscar más información. Pero tener un perfil, yo creo que eh, por último quizá un, un crowdfunding un poco más dummy quizá en, en Indiegogo o algo menos como eh, motivado al principio, puede servir mucho para alinear personas en torno a tu empresa. Entonces, cuando una conversión de pasillo, mira, no, yo estoy haciendo tal y igual cosa, mi proyecto en realidad es de una envergadura grande, oye, ¿sabéis que me encantaría tener más información? Mira, ahí está el código QR de mi campaña y, el, y, voy, y voy a poder pasarte eh, de alguna manera la, esto, lo que le hablaba antes, la ficha eh, en la cual estar, eh, la gente entiende innovación, en la cual la gente entiende emprendimiento. Entonces, yo, yo lo animo a todos, eh, y en, en, en plan C, en la, en la idea que tenemos que las personas debieran partir su camino exportador en, en la etapa cero haciendo una página de crowdfunding, haciendo un video crowdfunding, sacando buenas fotos, eh, preocupándose de hacer un buen texto explicativo, porque con eso van a poder eh, 
hacer que la, la, la gente que quiera tener más esta cuestión, cuando, cuando eh, se hacen estos negocios, se hacen las conexiones, se hacen la, los links, son cosas de, de 20 segundos de causar una buena impresión. Entonces, tener la posibilidad de que la gente vuelva a hacer un segundo clic con más calma en su casa de vuelta y que, y que pueda llegar al fondo para saber si le sirve o quizás para saber si no es en la conexión que necesita hacer contigo, pero le va a quedar en un crowdfunding muy, muy claro eh, de qué está todo en su empresa. Por, por resumirlo, quizás podríamos hablar de una especie de realidad aumentada. Estos anteojos que está haciendo Google de que uno mira y bueno tiene más información, las calorías, no sé qué. En el caso tuyo, decir, mira, yo hago tal cosa... Te, le, le podéis dar un brief quizá un poquito más como, como eh, de, 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 de contarle más la pasión que tení. Si quiere ver aspectos más técnicos, si quiere ver aspectos como más como duros de mi, de, de mi emprendimiento, ahí están resumidos en mi página de crowdfunding. Velo ahí, tenéis mucha más información. Ok, gracias. Sí, solo para darte un ejemplo, cuando fuimos nosotros fue la empresa Gigabot que es una impresora 3D, eh, bueno, impresionante, la raja. Eh, y la gracia es que ellos lanzaron su campaña de Kickstarter allá, no me acuerdo bien, no sé si te acuerdas cuánto eran, pero por decirte un número eran 50 millones de pesos lo que estaban buscando. 50 no, millones. Creo que, creo que eran como 10. Fíjate, en, en South By, con la gente que fueron, creo que cuadruplicaron lo que necesitaban en tres días. Entonces, si es que querías lanzarte una campaña, vais justo a un lugar donde hay mucha gente que entiende todo esto y que está dispuesta a gastar, no sé, a invertir en, en, en ideas como esta. Gracias. ¿Alguien más tiene alguna pregunta? No, estamos bien. Bueno, eh, yo, yo quisiera, eh, justo con agradecerle el, el tiempo por habernos escuchado y, y eh, poderse haber quedado, que aprovechen de, de tomarse algunas ricas cervezas. Agradecer a, a la viña Emiliana que nos no está regalando el vino y, y dándose a conocer aquí entre ustedes para que aprovechen de conocer lo que es un buen vino. Aprovechen de tomarse una rica cerveza Guzmán también, que las, las tenemos en la ida, y comerse un, un lomito también que antes, un hot dog, hot dog, antes de partir. Si quieren eh, tener más información sobre, sobre eh, crowdfunding, sobre South by Southwest o sobre Contact, eh, aprovechen de, de, de buscar los hashtags, ¿ya? particularmente el de contact es arroba contact guión bajo chile nosotros estamos destacados con el con el hashtag gato crowdfunding chile y south by southwest sxsw bueno nosotros un segundo le tenemos un regalo eh, si me yo ahí fran a, a peter y a jason por, por haber participado acá Ese es un, es un libro, that's a book uh, that works as a resume of our uh, president house. So you can have more uh, pictures and some corners that it's beautiful to have in an apartment or somewhere. Okay, a nice uh, present from the visit from Chile. Sí. Para, también para agradecerle y al final, un, solo como a, a modo de anécdota, nosotros hace cuatro meses, hace cinco meses más o menos, salió la idea de hacer este bajar la Alianza del Pacífico en temas de innovación y emprendimiento. Este ya es la última instancia, estamos cerrando un trabajo que fue bastante grande. Eh, y al final, nuestra visión desde, el, desde Pro Chile, del programa Contact Chile, es la internacionalización, no es solamente exportar, sino que es internacionalizarse. Acá vimos dos muy buenos ejemplos en temas de crowdfunding. Ojalá que en el futuro lo podamos encontrar de distintos países en plataformas como Indiegogo o Kickstarter, o de distintos países nos encontremos en South by Southwest eh, el próximo año. Entonces, la invitación no, ter no termina aquí, no termina en Lab 4, vamos a seguir viéndonos y la idea es que entre los distintos países nos podamos internacionalizar y podamos eh, unirnos con temas de crowdfunding, temas de South by Southwest eh, y mucho más. Muchas gracias, ahora disfruten.